Club at 22, the Rangers podcast is supported by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code CLUB at 22. Your balls will thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Club Reaction as Rangers blast past Hearts with a 5-0 victory at a very cold Ibrox, but it was a very enjoyable afternoon. I'm your host Scott Carney and joining me in uh, is Ryan Haymarsh. Ryan, this is quickly becoming the, the Ryan and Scott podcast, I think. Well, I was going to say to you, if we're going to rebrand it, let me know. Um, but I, um, I, can't, I can't remember the, the name of the other two guys that used to be on this. No, me neither, um, mate. No, me neither. No, but I, it's a, just us two again tonight, but um, I think we deserve this a podcast ourselves, mate, after the couple of pods we've had to do. Yes, I would agree, mate. We definitely deserve to do this one. Uh, I'd make my apologies now. I've got, like, hat hair. It was very cold at Ibrox today. I'm literally just in the door and I've not really had time to sort it out. But, yeah, cold day at Ibrox, but a very, very warming performance from Rangers. Ryan, just quickly, before we, we break down individual bits, it's going to be the old cliche, it's going to get flung about, where was that on Wednesday night, etc, etc, uh, and you had literally just said to me before we started that this is where the frustration lies, because this team is capable. Uh, that's, as I think, probably the only head time is, we all know this team are capable of performance like that. I have not seen it, probably we've maybe seen it in Motherwell away where we've seen that type of mm-hmm. performance, but they're so capable of it. And that's why we get frustrated with them. That's why where the anger came from after the Ross County and the, the Old Firm game on Wednesday. But yeah, they've turned up today. They've given us exactly what we wanted. And the performance for me outweighed the result, which was needed today. I think we usually go to games and say, it's all about getting the three points. That's all that matters. I'll take a 1-0. Yeah wasn't about that today. It felt that we needed a performance today and we got it. We did get it, mate. Yeah, you can't really you can't really ask for much more today from Rangers. Uh, very impressive, uh, especially in that second half, but we will get into it. So before we do get into it, you can join the channel from the 99p to help support us and help us grow. Also, if you're a Club at 22 supporter, at the end of the season, you could win a gift voucher for the Rangers store. If becoming a... a our Club at Two supporters not really your thing. You can buy the podcast a coffee. There's a link for that in the description for this podcast. A massive thank you to Mark Andrew, who bought the podcast four coffees the other day. Cheers, Mark. Uh, I know Mark grown up, and it was good to get back in touch with you, mate. So thank you very much for your generosity. And as always, please like the videos, uh, as I say, and uh, subscribe to YouTube channel. Two B clicks for you cost nothing, but it means a what the world to us. So Ryan, um, we will discuss the team. Uh, the team today was McGregor, Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan, Bassey, Jack, Lundstrom, Arfield, Aribo, Kent, and Morelos. <sighs> I'm not going to lie, mate, um, and it's come back and smacked me in the face today. When I seen Lundstrom in that team, I was massively shocked. Uh, however, it was very good to see Alfredo Morelos back. Yeah, well, Lundstrom, I was, when I saw the lineup, <coughs> I was just standing outside with my dad. And I think I was texting you guys. And when I saw the lineup, my heart sunk a bit. My heart sank. I thought, he's got this team wrong. This looks like a slow team when we are looking for a intense uh, a performance with a bit of intensity I thought he's got it wrong I still disagree although he did get it right on hindsight I still disagree with the uh, Ahmed Diallo thing I don't think that I've done his confidence any good I'm being dropped today because I don't I give him a bye for Wednesday because of mm-hmm. his age and his inexperience but I mean that aside Rangers are bigger than, than Ahmed Diallo but um, yeah my heart sunk a wee bit Lundstrom like I've said many times, I do like him, but you wonder where he fits in um, in the Rangers team. But he played well today. He, he done a job and really, really shut up a lot of doubters today. Yeah, we will come on to Lundstrom later in the later in the um, the pod, mate. I, I've I'm, I'm I've always said I'll be honest on the pod, and when I seen Lundstrom's name, I was like, oh no, I didn't feel good about it. It didn't make me feel 
Rather, well, Rosie, I travelled to the game with Jamie today, uh, and I got in the car and I was like, oh, no lying, mate, I don't feel particularly good about today. And Jamie's to his credit, was feeling uh, much more positive than I was. I don't think we could, any of us would really have expected the result and the performance that we got today from Rangers. And <clears throat> yeah, there will be questions. The questions are going to come up. Where was that? Where was that on Wednesday, etc.? That's That is going to happen, probably quite rightly so. Um, however, to want a reaction as every Rangers fan did and to get that today, especially in that second half where Rangers were absolutely ruthless. Um, I can't ask for much more. I really can't ask for much more than that. So we'll jump, in, jump into the game, Ryan. Uh, and we started the game flying. We kind of came out the traps pretty quick. We were up the park within the first couple of minutes. We had an early corner. They led to a, a, a kind of half chance. He's really well, half chance for a rebo, especially. Balogun should probably do with the better with his header from the second corner. Uh, but again, we were we were on the front foot, definitely. Kent goes close uh, after cutting back and getting the shot away. Alfie was about an inch away at the back post from getting on the end of it. Not sure Alfred, if Alfredo would have been offside at this point. It kind of looked like he was unsure whether he should have flung himself at it or not. But on 11 minutes, mate, we make it 1-0. And it is that man, Alfredo Morelos. And this goal is... Honestly, superb. I love every single bit about this goal. The composure Jack shows in the midfield to get the ball to Bassey. Bassey plays an absolute, it's like a wonderful pass right between the right back and the centre half. Kent has made a run. He's left his full back uh, and he's dust, really. And the, the first time cross along to Alfredo Morelos, who is sliding in at the back. Not an easy finish by any stretch of the imagination. And yeah, Alfredo was back, but just the start we wanted, mate. Yeah, it was indeed. We, you, you knew, but even before we, we scored, we were creating chances. There was intensity to our game. You could see every player was hungry to put some wrongs right. And yes, that's what we expected of them. That is a standard, but it was good to see. It just felt, it put me at ease. You just kind of knew, right, they're up for this, thank God. Um, in terms of the goal, Ryan Jack put a hell of a performance in today. It just shows how different um, I'm, I've been... We'll, we'll maybe come on to it later on in the game, but I do think he was a lot more positive in the midfield than Kamara is. I think sometimes Kamara can slow us down, and you know how much I like Glenn Kamara, but I do think he can slow us down sometimes. Jack mm -hmm. is very quick at getting that ball and moving the ball, and he's very quick at dipping his shoulder and turning if the, if the play's not in front of him. He gets the ball out to Bassi. Again, this highlights Gio's team selection. Bassi plays the ball first time down the wing, splits the defence, you ain't getting that for Borna, mate. I don't think you'll get it from Borna. I think it's in it. Mm -hmm. an intelligent bit of play from Bassey. Um I think that I think Bassey's better on the ball than Borna is. I think Borna can sometimes be a one trip pony. I have said that. I know we, we don't want to start select players too much, but Bassey was the right man to play today. And that's why that, that showed with that goal. And then obviously the cross in for Alfie, it's, it just it was, it was set for him to score. We've missed him. He was playing great before he went to Colombia. And uh, I was going to say sat on a bench, but he was probably sitting in the stand for Colombia. I don't think he was even on the bench. No, he wasn't. Um, but he, he looked so lean and hungry throughout the game, pressing the ball, switching, dropping deep. He just looked fantastic today. And I am excited. If, if Alfie can hold on to that form and that hunger from now to the end of the season, I'm excited to watch Alfie every week. I think... Well, Fredo Morelos, mate, you kind of know what mood he's in pretty much from the start. And the first totally long ball over the top, the first ball over the top, he just battled with that defender. I don't know who the defender was, don't know his name, but he was just battling with him. And I said, I turned and said to my dad, I was like, Alfie's in the mood for a fight here. I was like, he's he's up for this. And then the first ball that got fired up to him as well, he killed it dead. Uh, like when he does his hold up play, and I was like, oh, he's on it. You can just tell mm -hmm. that he's in the mood. And he repaid that today. Um, uh, Alfredo Morelos was bloody tremendous today, and yeah, it was, was so great. good to see him. It was so good to see him back. But we, we'll we'll get further into it, mate. Um, we should probably be two up after this. Uh, Ryan Kent again. We were down the left hand side. Again, good counter-attacking football from Rangers in the cut back, and he's not far out. He tries to get it literally just inside the post when he puts it just wide. Uh, it's, it's a great move. I'm not do I be too harsh. However, he should score that in my personal opinion. Ryan, I know where you sit, it's, you're quite low down and you've not have really seen how close it was. Uh, take it from me, mate, it was very close and he should have scored that. Yeah, it looked like it. I mean, it was a good bit of play and I loved the way he cut back. Um, 
it just looked as if I couldn't do it. Obviously, as you know, I sit in the govern front. I couldn't tell how how far he'd missed it, but I'm pretty sure that uh, Ryan Kent would have heard the guy behind me shout, "You should be hitting the fucking, you should be hitting the fucking target with that." Um, he did shout it at least five times, um, which was very nice of him. Yeah, yeah. No, I should have scored. There's, there's literally no doubt about it. However. I was very, very critical. Maybe not as much as I should have been uh, on on the podcast uh, on Wednesday. Um, we try to keep it together, mate. But I have been critical after that. Ryan Kent was not great on Wednesday night, but tonight it was much more like the Ryan Kent that we know, uh, willing to just go at his man, take his man on, and cause a bit of trouble. Uh, so he, he was unlucky. However, he should score. Now, Rangers won 5 0 today, mate, but I'm going to stop to speak about a referee. Can you believe it, mate? Can you believe I'm going to talk about a referee and I'm going to talk about Willie fucking Column? And excuse my language, I'm sorry. <clears throat> now, I don't believe in cheats, mate. I don't believe they're in the game. I, I don't think it's a, it's a thing that they do, but they, this is unbelievable bias being shown towards Hearts today. I, I, there's some of the decisions he made today, mate, that I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what he's seen. I don't know what he even he thinks that he's seen. Bassey gets booked for, in my personal opinion, that Hearts defender pulled out of a tackle. If you pull out of a tackle, you're going to get hurt. Bassey wins the ball. It's not dangerous. Bassey gets booked. Balogun then wins a tackle, which is a superb tackle, and he takes his man with it. Doesn't matter. He wins it. And we're about to break up the park. Colum knows he's about to, we're about to break up the park and he stops the play and books Balligan. Now, Aribo's then kicked while he's on a break. He tries to play advantage. He's the, the That Devlin boy doesn't try and win the ball. He tries to take out Joe Aribo. It's a booking all day. Oh, no, even playing advantage, whatever you want to do. It's a booking all day long. He gets nothing for it. Am I probably being too kind in thinking that he's not a cheat, mate? <laughs> No, you're being no, you're being intelligent. Diplomatic. Mate, he's not a, yes, <laughs> no. diplomatic might be the right yeah. word, but no, it's an intelligent um overview of things because Willie Colm is not a cheat and referees are not cheats. What we have is inept referees, they are so yes. bad. Willie Colm is a, a horrific referee, and there is a reason why Scotland have no officials at the upcoming World Cup, is because they are so bad. And Willie Collin put in a... I mean, Willie Collin was so bad tonight, he could have played for us on Wednesday. That's how bad he was today. <laughs> he really was horrendous. Um, he's just inconsistent. I, I can't remember, was it Balogun or... One of our players got booked. And it, whether it was a booker or not, he set the tone. That's where, that's where the standard is. If you're going to book someone for that, then fine. And I don't know how many hearts got away with exactly, like, you know, similar challenges and they just didn't book the hearts player. And I was like, is this because it's a, is this a smaller club against Rangers? Or what is this? Not, I don't think it's cheap. I just think it's an inept refereeing. And he yeah. really was poor today, will they call him. And for us to be saying that after a 5-0 win tells you how poor he was. That's why I have to say it, mate, because no matter how good Rangers were, and this sounds probably over dramatic, we were playing against 12 men in that first half especially because I don't know what... Honestly, I, I would defy anybody to be able to sit, Rangers fan or not, sit and tell me how Willie Collum controlled that game and what he was thinking that he's seen. It's truly baffling. Uh, and also in the second half, uh, Ryan Jacks took out as well uh, as he's about to take a shot. He goes through the man and wins the ball, but he doesn't do anything. It's not a free kick, it's not anything. And he doesn't stop the game while Ryan Jacks down. And then further on, that Boyle goes down. I think it was Boyle goes down. I can't remember what one, but he stops a game. And I'm like, you can't pick and choose when you're going to do it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, he's not a cheat. I called him a cheat. I was shouting cheat at him. Just, <laughs> I was, was shouting a, all sorts. I was there was a few things shouting at him today, mate. Yeah. There's a few songs, a few songs sung about Willie Colm as well, which I'm not a fan of, if I'm honest. I think it's, nah, it kind makes of makes a desperation, but aye, yeah. it makes a desperation for the fans sometimes. And it's just frustration because, because it's, it's so bad what you're seeing in front of you, but yeah, he just it's and it's him, it's Clancy, it's the inconsistency of them when they come to Ibrooks, the inconsistent refereeing where they'll book a Rangers player to start their authority or this is how the game's going, and then it's the inconsistency just carries them through the game. They don't book the other the team for the exact type of challenges, and it, it really isn't it. And like I said, the only way I highlight it is. 
that's why Scotland have no referees at this upcoming World Cup because they are so poor, such a poor standard of referees in Scotland. It's shocking, it really is. But again, it will be the last time I have a wee moan about on this pod because it was a rather <laughs> good day. But I have you have to call that stuff out. Uh, Willie Collin was shocking, and it's a lot of the times you will get people. And Ibrooks complaining about the referee, no matter what they do, even if they think it's a, 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 a even if I think it's a fair decision or whatever, you still get people complaining about the referee. It's been a long time since I heard pretty much every single fan and Ibrooks going, "What are you doing? Seriously, what are you doing?" Um, it was becoming he was putting players at danger, uh, and that's not right. You can't you can't have that in the game. Uh, and as you said, mate, you no better way to sum it up. We don't have any refs representing Scotland in the World Cup, so that tells you everything that's, you need to know. Anyway, that's his <clears throat> that's his job, Carney. Uh, first and foremost, his job is to protect the players. Yes. Before anything else, that's what his job is to protect the players. And as you said, players were in danger with some tackles and. He just didn't control the game at all. No, nope. a moron, an absolute moron. Anyway, yep. we will move on, mate. Um, Tav is an effort for a free kick, goes close. Jack and Morelos also both have efforts saved. Um, but as far as first half go, mate, I think we will will agree that it was a rather good one. Uh, apart from Willie Collum, really, that's probably the only thing we'll, we'll say about the negative. Uh, into the second half, mate, we do start with a bit of a few scary moments. Um, Hearts are maybe unlucky not to to make it one each. If I'm going to be honest, uh, just poor defending decisions a wee bit. We at the back today, there was times where. I don't want to say a lack of confidence. That's probably not right. A lack of certainty and belief in what you were, what you're doing as a football player. Would, would you think that's fair? And look, <clears throat> Bassi's been playing centre back for a long time, so I don't want to be too harsh on him. He made a few errors tonight. There's no doubt about it. But he's now just been put back out at left back, uh, and I will back that up by saying, but uh, Calvin Bassi is now our left back going forward. Calvin Bassi is our left back going forward. I do agree with you that when we started the second half, he had a couple of brain farts. He did make a couple of poor decisions. And yeah, I think that lack of assertiveness is, it runs throughout the defence just now. They do need a run of clean sheets. They need a few games where they've they've played well to to get their confidence up. You can understand that after the bashing they took on Wednesday, which was an utter bashing for all of them, um, you can understand they maybe have a few shaky moments. They've come away with a clean sheet, however. The only thing I'll criticise the team really for today as a whole was there was a moment where, I don't know if it was Boyle or Cochrane, it was one of the players was down at the govern front. Um, no foul, absolutely no foul. I don't know if he died, I can't remember, but it just it was no foul. And um, the Rangers players had the ball and they were looking at Colm as if, well, we kicked the ball out. And you're like... This is the thing no. we talk about, the dark, yeah. the dark arts, <laughs> that side of the game. And they are literally looking at each other as if, do I kick this out? And you can hear the yeah. fans going, play fucking on, just play <laughs> yes. on. We need go, yeah. you know, we need goal number two. And that's the only thing. It's that side of that Rangers team again. Just have a wee bit of street, be a bit more streetwise, play on. The referee will let you know when he's stopping the game. Um, but yeah, they had a, a wee 10 minute spell, Carney, but I, I was maybe slightly concerned, but it was just. Uh, we, we, we sailed through it anyway. We, we rode, we rode, it wasn't a storm, but we rode the storm, let's say that. Yeah, it was just a slow start. I'll put it down to just a slow start for Rangers in the second half. But from then on, Rangers were, and I cannot um, I cannot overestimate or underestimate or overestimate, I can't. Uh, Rangers were ter- terrific, like honestly superb. Some of the goals that we are about to talk about are sublime goals, really, really great goals. Um, we make it too with um, Alfredo Morelos. This is pretty much all coming from our midfield two today, mate. From because from them that that we lapse in concentration really at the start of the second half. Lundstrom and Ryan Jack just completely controlled that game. Lundstrom especially. Uh, I will ha- happily hold my hands up and admit that I was wrong uh, about Lundstrom when I've seen the team choice today. He was outstanding. And if it wasn't for a certain man from Colombia, he would certainly have been man of the match today, in my opinion. I thought he was tremendous. But it's Alfredo that makes it to me. Again, just not giving up on the ball, just refusing to give up. He gets a wee uh, break of the ball, probably falls in his favour, and it falls perfectly to him. And when the left foot mate calls an absolute beauty past uh, Craig Gordon, and that was the beginning of the end for Hearts, and Rangers just motored on. 
Yeah, and Alfie's see Alfie's attitude. I mean, you 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 boys, you Ali and Scotia and the listeners will be fed up hearing me say this. See attitude and desire and hunger. It's, it it just gets you so far, and and it's especially in Scottish football. And Alfie's attitude and hunger and desire got him that goal. We've seen it umpteen times with him this season. He just he just looked as you said that from kick off he just looked hungry for this today, and he deserved his goals. And that finish was Alfredo two thousand nineteen two thousand twenty. It was <laughs> I know it wasn't the same side of goal, but if you remember that Porto goal where he just took it on his left foot, it was sublime, absolutely sublime from Alfredo Morelos. Deserved it. Obviously ran down celebrated in front of you, which I wasn't too fond of. I thought he'd maybe come over to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's his uh, corner. Aye. That's his, he knows oh, the cameras over there, mate. He's not stupid. Right. Okay. I was pointing over it. He's going lab. I don't know if he's seen me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, um, it might, might surprise you, mate. I wasn't looking for you. <laughs> disappointed, mate. Disappointed. Know, I'm trying to not. join it. I'm trying to join the club deck club, that's all. <laughs> uh Aye, he was, his, his finish was absolutely sublime and it just set the tone for us for the rest of the game. And we were getting body every time we started attacking, we were getting more and more bodies forward, which I believe is the key element in us scoring so many goals today. Because when we break away sometimes, there's like two, three bodies up front and you're just like, you need more than that. You need to flood, flood the attack, get midfielders forward, get the wing-backs forward go for it, and Rangers grab the game by the neck, and that's why they were queuing up to score goals. Yeah, and that leads us on to John Lundstrom, mate, who then had a Boston run forward from pretty much the edge of our half, straight forward. Uh, everybody willing him on, I think, even from, from his performance, willing him on to take a shot. The shot's blocked, uh, and it's a way, but he was, he was really, really unlucky. John Lundstrom deserved more from that, to be honest. Uh, and then there was a change for Rangers. Uh, Glenn Kamara came on uh, for Ryan Jack going off. Ryan Jack lasting about 70 minutes, mate, 68, 68, 70 minutes, something like that. Really good to see Jacko back. Um, we don't need to tell anybody, mate, how much me and you in particular love Ryan Jack. <clears throat> I think he just showed today that this spot's his. And as long as he can stay fit, mate, Ryan Jack, I'll say it again, he doesn't come out of that team. No, uh, I thought he was brilliant today. Absolutely brilliant. Just completely different centre midfielder to anyone we've really got. I always give him credit for recycling the ball well and, and moving it fast, but I thought he had so much more to his game today. Um, I was worried when he went down for that non-foul, according to Willie Collum, at the edge of the box, yeah. because he did take a few minutes. I don't know if you were watching him. No, he was think. hobbling about. Of course I was, was watching him. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Jack Cam. Um, he was he, he ran down, I think he ended up having to go down to the Western Closure and clear a ball up the line and he just he was still hobbling and I thought God like sure, surely he's not he, he's not aggravated the injury or, but nah he was tremendous today Ryan Jack um, so was Lundstrom Lundstrom was great but I thought Ryan Jack really made the midfield his own today and yes if he is fit he gets in but it was it did cross my mind today that I was just thinking when I was driving home that what, what went right with Rangers, what we did get bodies forward, but that midfield that was a lot quicker without Glenn Kamara. I, I don't know if I'm alone in thinking that. I love Glenn Kamara, you know how much I love him, but it just he's so good at keeping the ball and letting the ball run through him, but that midfield was a lot quicker at moving the ball into the areas we need the ball when we're attacking, and uh, Ryan Jack and Lundstrom should take a lot of credit for that today. Uh, I could not agree more, mate. I actually turned around to the, the fellas that sit next to me and I said, have we missed Glenn Kamara at all today? And every one of us was like, nope, not one of us thought that we did miss him. And look, this might do Glenn Kamara good, getting a wee spell out of the, out the, out the team. And to be fair, to make an impact coming on from the bench, he certainly did just that. A great move again from Rangers down the right-hand side and Alfie just slips the ball straight into Kamara's path. Kamara busts away. He's actually got time to check over his shoulder to see who the guy chasing him down. Cuts back, literally sends that guy nearly onto your lap, mate. I think that guy's still yes. sliding, whoever it was, and cool as you like, mate, just passes the ball into the net and it's 3-0 up. It was... It, it, Glenn, it was that's the Glenn Kamara we know, mate. That's the Rolls Royce player of... Glenn Kamara, composed, burst of pace, everything, the touch, everything about that goal, uh, and I hope that does him the world of good. 
I think it will. And I think they're right what you say that Glenn Kamara probably did need a rest because he's played under Gerard constantly and then into this new regime and he's played constantly as well. Glenn Kamara's gone through a lot as a Rangers player. If you think back to, I don't want to say psychological damage, but it must have been horrible for him what he's had to go through with that Prague nonsense and. Yeah. Played under Ger- played under Gerard constantly, and, and obviously we've been through some hard times under Gerard. And Kamara's been there for for a lot of it. Um, so he maybe maybe does need does need a rest, and it will we'll see a refreshing Glenn Kamara. But that was a sublime finish. And as you say, he sent he sent the Hearts defender to the, the shop the shops at the back <laughs> of the cop, and that boy was gone. <laughs> uh, the compo- the composure to finish it and. It's refreshing to see Glenn Kamara break the lines because he's, yes. you're not used to him making runs like that, and he's got that in his game. He's probably one of the most intelligent players that we have, and like I say, getting bodies forward. If Glenn Kamara can do that, breaking the lines like that, because I, I think he plays that role for Finland. I'm pretty sure he plays higher up the park and doesn't he play does. a sitting midfielder. So that might be something Joe's going to do. He might he might be bringing him into the team off the bench and, and playing him up front like that. Not up front, but playing him as attacking midfielder like that because he has got the football and got the composure to finish like that. Certainly does. Um, it was a great finish. And shortly after, uh, we make it for me. Uh, a bit of a confusing one here. was but I don't know what happened because at one point I thought Colin was going to call it off. Again, it was great work from, from Rangers. Really good passing moves. Getting there. Alfredo again slips in. Um, is it Alfredo that slips in Scott Arfield? I think it is. Scott Arfield's first shot is blocked by the keeper and it bounces straight back to him. I'm not sure if it was. I could be wrong. It might have been Kamara. Somebody will correct me. I've not seen the game. The goal's back yet. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, and Scott Arfield uh, collects up the rebound and puts it home for, for now. But I say there was a wee bit of confusion after that. It was... Um, the game kind of stopped. Everybody kind of looked at each other, and it all got a wee bit confusing. I mean, I celebrated, and then after I was like, "Oh, what's going on here? What's what's Colum doing?" Nothing came of it. I don't know if there was a call for offside. I, I'm not really a hundred percent sure, but I, I'll always say it with Scott Arfield. No matter if he's playing poorly, he will give you absolutely everything. And he was playing wide right today, and no disrespect to him, he's not really got the legs in him to to be that kind of bombing right-sided player, if you like, for, for our wing especially, but he always deserves a goal because he gives you everything. He gives you he gives you 100%, and I was speaking to someone during the week about Arfield getting a new contract, whether he should or not, and I said, Scott Arfield is this player who will hang about at Rangers until he retires because he's a player yeah. who you can rely on. He's, you will get exactly what you've seen today, 100% from, from Arfield, and when he gets his goal like that today, he'll play anywhere for Rangers, he'll play, if he has to play in goal, he'll play in goal, and he'll give 100% and he won't moan about it, and he won't sulk he's just a great utility player to have, Scott Arfield, I do believe that Ahmed Diallo, I'll get, I'll get slot in the comments for this, I do believe that Ahmed Diallo was a player to play on the right hand side to attack and just go at hearts today but listen, Scott Arfield did his bit, played well and got his goal. So, um, yes, maybe I'm talking shit. <laughs> yeah, but no, I think mate, everybody had different opinions after Wednesday night, who would who, who deserved to start the day and who didn't. Um, I said about Ryan Kent as well, walking over, I said if we had somebody else that was capable of doing what Ryan Kent can do when Ryan Kent's on his game, he wouldn't have started today, in my opinion, because he was that poor on Wednesday night. But again, he proved me wrong because I thought Ryan... Kent was was great today, um, but yeah, Scotty Arfield, I, I can't praise him anymore, and it's good to hear from his press conference that was on Friday that um, there's con- contract negotiations happening with him to keep at the club because I think even if he's not contributing on the field, what he can bring off the field is massive because he gets this football club, he understands what this is all about, and he wants to be here. Um, that's all I want. Um, that's all I, I really ever ask of a Rangers player. <clears throat> and then we get the chance to see Mr. Aaron Ramsey in Royal Blue, mate. Uh, Aribo and Arfield come off just after that goal, actually just after that goal. Aribo again today, I think he looks tired, if I'm going to be honest. I don't think he looks like he's, he's fully... He's maybe not fully fit, but I think he could be doing with a, 
a rest. I think the game against Annan, I'd be shocked if we see him. Uh, I think we'll probably see him Wednesday night, but I'd be shocked if we see him against Annan. I think he'll get a rest. However, we will talk about Aaron Ramsey. Clearly not played football in a while, mate. I think you could tell that. However, the touches, the composure, the movement of the player, I'm very excited. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he looks as if he'll slot in there. He does look as if he'll slot in there. His touch was off a few times and a few underrated passes. That's going to be expected if he's not played football since November. Yeah, yeah so I was delighted to see him get his debut. What a reception he got as well, Carly. I mean, that's it's special. To, it's always special to get, hear a player get his debut at Ibrox, but he got a great reception. Um, it must be a buzz for him. And it, yeah, I, I can't wait to see him. I think... Uh, it's good to see his touch off because it makes me feel better when I play seven sides that you're allowed to just uh, you're allowed to just have get away with some of your passes like that. But um, aye, he's he's going to be he, he's going to just slot in there for us. I can see him him Jack and Lundstrom and Kamara just fighting that out um, for their places. But he'll get sharper. I expect him to start on Wednesday um, and get as much game time there. I wouldn't be surprised if he played against Dan as well. I think they'll be looking to get Ramsey up to speed as quick as possible because competition in the middle of that pitch looks healthy for us. And I know we're, we're heavy, we're heavy with, with players, but I think it's I think it's a healthy thing if we've got competition in the middle of that pitch. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, especially with the performance John Lundstrom put in, he did himself no damage at all. Uh, he was really good, and yeah, I would I would think he probably would play the full game against Ann, and I think that's pretty much a cert that Ramsey will play that game. But yeah, uh, it's it's exciting to see the reaction that we had, and I don't want to get too carried away. But this is more than I expected. I, I won't lie. I, I just think Rangers in that second half, especially today, were. Tremendous. And we make it a fifth, mate. Um, Fashion Junior, everybody's favourite man from Zambia. Again, mate, another one where he just runs at his man, decides that I'm, he's going to be brave, he's going to take on his man, he's going to continue to keep going. Uh, and the ball comes to him and it is the, the coolest of finishes. He almost he's just kind of flicks it with his foot into the, the, the corner of the goal. Every goal today that we scored was a good goal, a really good goal. Um, and yeah, for Fashion to finish it off and to slide and do the Morelos celebration as well, it's just tremendous. It was a great way to cap off a, a rather good display at Ibrox. Yeah, it's always good to see Sakala scoring because you'll get to see the smile and he deserves it because he's he's a player that will give 100% as well. I do think the team were queuing up to score goals. I noticed Ramsey, I can't yeah. remember if it was Sakala's goal, but he was bombing forward looking for a goal, looking for the cross as well. Uh, Sakala's finish was a lot better when I looked over at the screen to see it on like on the big screen. Um, it was a great finish, an absolute sublime finish from him as well. And um, I didn't see Morelos' reaction to uh, no, Sakala celebrating that. But I'd imagine Morelos would be like that. Is it just me? <laughs> like I know he did Arfields, but I just imagine Morelos kind of sulking as if no, no, how, that's how my you, celebration. Don't, how you, aye, aye. <laughs> totally one of the ones. But um, yeah. I never noticed it. I'll, I'll see it on the telly tonight. But uh, yeah, yeah Sakala, des- Sakala deserved his goal. What a great finish. And it, it capped off a brilliant team performance for Rangers. And it's made me a happy bear tonight. Absolutely. And even talking about competition in the midfield, um, it was then Kent and Lundstrom that went off. <clears throat> Diallo and Davis came on. Nothing really to port towards the end of the game. Rangers easily seen the game out and it's a, a very good day at Ibrox. Look, mate, it's more than I expected. I am delighted. I was very happy leaving Ibrox. A very enjoyable way to spend a, a Sunday afternoon, but we have to continue to do this now. We are better than the, most of the teams in this um most of the teams in this league, there's no doubt about it. It's going to be close. With Celtic obviously winning 4 now today as well. It's going to be a, a close run thing, but we need to continue to perform like that because we can. And we now are having the depth. We've got players coming back that can contribute. And they took their chances today. The people that got their jersey today took their chance and they performed. And I'm so happy we didn't whimper to a win. We went out and we steamrolled over the top of hearts. Uh, I could not ask any more from the team today and it was a great reaction. They owed us that, um, but they owe it now to continue to keep going and to continue to perform like that and put these teams to bed. Don't sit back. Don't and try and keep control. We pressed today. We were on the front foot. We didn't give, give Hearts a minute when they were trying to get back in the game and we got our rewards. Um, we, another another day, that might have been a 2-0 win, 3-0 win. 
with a performance like that, but it helps when you've got an Alfredo Morelos that is on absolute fire uh, and it looks absolutely raring to go for the rest of this season. So, Ryan, <clears throat> without further ado, mate, who is your man of the match? Oh, it's a nice place to be when you can think mm-hmm. of a right good few players in it. I mean, I feel as if it's a long time since I've, 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 we've sat here and thought it could be a few players. It's Alfredo Morelos. It is. It's got to be Alfredo Morelos. He, his attitude fed into the team. The way he was pressing the ball, his hunger to go on the ball, his touch, everything was on. You could tell he was hungry. And it must have been refreshing for the players to see him back and leading the front line because... We have covered it. We struggle when he's not there. And we do need to address that in the transfer market in, in the summer, but that, that time will come. But yeah, Morelos gets it today. His attitude was spot on. He looks fit. He looks lean and hungry for goals. And we all know how dangerous he can be. A happy Alfredo Morelos is a dangerous Alfredo Morelos, mate. I've said it all along. I can't, I'm not going to not give it to Alfredo Morelos. Uh, two goals and assist, mate after being away from the team for that long, to come back and make the impact like that. Um, he is crucial. He's vital for us for the rest of this season. And he was tremendous today. Uh, absolutely buzzing for Alfredo to see him back and firing. If Alfredo didn't have one of the best games in recent memory, then it would be John Lundstrom for me. Uh, I can't criticise anything that John Lundstrom done. He flung himself into every single challenge. He won his battles. He was tidy with his passes, he was driving forward and he was committed to the cause today. Uh, that is what I expected John Lundstrom to be when we signed him and today he showed it. So congratulations to him for doing that. Congratulations to Rangers and Geo for the team for their response today. But it is three points as a performance, but we need to keep going. We need to keep driving. But yeah, man of the match all day long, Alfredo Morelos. So Ryan, thank you very much. Um, just quickly to everybody, I am sorry that there was no preview pod. I was finding out the gender of my baby and then I was working the following day. Just didn't really have the time to squeeze it in, so I do apologise. I'm having a boy, for those of you who don't know. Fucking delighted. And yeah, um, that's why there was no preview pod, so I'm sorry. Things will be a wee bit back to normal this week. Uh, it will be the shows as usual, as you know. But, Ryan, thanks very much, mate, and I'll speak to you on Tuesday, mate, for Club Deck Corner. Yes, mate, Tuesday for Club Deck Corner. That was a breath of fresh air. really enjoyed that today. Just want to give a shout-out to the woman who stopped her car um, over the other side of the M8 today when my dad decided to trip over a curb and go down like Furashi uh, Kyogo. Um, God. Fell, but he's absolutely fine. Um, but left his dig, he left his dignity on the pavement. He's absolutely <laughs> fine. But thanks, thanks to the women who stopped their car and checked on him. Oh, get well soon, uh, Ryan Dad's pride uh, and his dignity. Ah, oh, oh, fair play to him. Uh, yeah, no, great mate. I really do appreciate you you coming on. Uh, as you say, as a bit of the the Scott and Ryan podcast just now. I'm sure the other boys will decide to turn up at some point, mate. Uh, but shameless plug from me, as always. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos, give us a wee five star review on Apple Podcast. Please enter the, the Rangers charity raffle that we're running to help us raise as much money for the the Rangers Charity Foundation. You can win a tour for four people of Ibrook Stadium for only £3 an entry um, there's a link below that it's been running along the bottom of the screen as well if you could do that that'd be great if we get to £100 uh, we'll match that £100 and we'll give £200 to the Rangers Charity Foundation so please help us reach that goal if you could that would be smashing uh, as I said we were back on Tuesday night with a club deck corner much happier Bears um, this weekend that is for sure it's the reaction it's the performance that we were waiting for and Alfredo Morelos is back and I am so happy to see him. So we are Club at 22, the Rangers podcast, and I'll speak to you all next time. Cheers, everyone.